Check out Tim Wood in my track. Still an agent butter with his CPR water. But no be me go judge. Hi everyone, my name is Tamara and welcome to another episode of The Yellow Wall, the show where we talk about everything and anything as long as everyone is making noise about it on social media. There have been quite a few things trending up and down recently. It was International Women's Day last week, which was marvelous. In anti-women news, R. Kelly cried and gave an AMVCA worthy performance doing an interview with Gail King that convinced absolutely no one anywhere that he was innocent. So, whatever. Nigeria finally finished our last batch of elections. Now, I'm obviously not allowed to say too much about that, but I think it's safe to say, INEC isn't great too. They came late to polling stations, the whole ass riot broke out in one state, and don't even get me started on the mess in rivers. You guys have one job every four years. One job! Last week, the Michael Jackson documentary, Leaving Neverland, came out. In the documentary, two of Jackson's alleged victims, Wade Robson and Jimmy Safechuck, talk about their time with him and all the abuse they went through. There was a follow-up interview afterwards with, where Oprah sat down with them to get more details. And guys, people are pissed! They are angry at the producers, they are angry at HBO for airing it, they are even angry at Oprah. I didn't even know black people had the ability to be angry at Oprah, but they are fully like boycotting her. There's so much outrage. To a certain extent, I get it. I'm a human being, so naturally, I adore Michael Jackson. He's hands down one of, if not the greatest performer of all time, and it's really hard to reconcile these accusations with this man we all love. But at the same time, I think that love is making us all a little stupid. I know someone who hasn't even watched the documentary, and she fully wants to stab Oprah in the eye. People are not even trying to hear that nonsense about our MJ. But to be honest, if it was me or any other Nigerian they were accusing of all these things, <laughs> it, it would be a different story. You people would be saying she did it. She did that shit. She did it. Because, yeah. I want to point out right here that I am in no way saying Michael Jackson is guilty. I'm not saying he's innocent either. All I want to do right now is tell you the facts and let you do the judging yourself. And I'm not just going to talk about the documentary because A, a lot of it was mainly just these two guys' personal accounts of what happened. And B, that thing was four hours long. I don't have to, nobody has that kind of time. I watched some of it. I watched the important bits and the internet had everything else to fill me in. So, yeah. I'm gonna make it easy on you though and pretend we're not talking about Michael Jackson so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. Let's pretend we're talking about a completely random Nigerian guy called, I don't know, Olu Samson Adelaja. So here are some facts about Mr. Olu Samson. First off, let's start with something that isn't an accusation or a claim, it's just 100% fact. Olu Samson Adelaja slept in the same bed as children. Children that weren't his. I'm sorry, there's no way to spin this. That's weird on so many levels. Olu Samson said in an interview that there was nothing wrong with sharing a bed with boys and children and to think there's something wrong is ignorant. That, that's just ignorant. Then please though, it's like me, I ignorant die because I don't understand. It's not like Olu Samson had one small bedroom that he owned though. He owned a whole goddamn theme park. I think he could at least afford air mattress, no? One of the men in the documentary even says that Olu Samson came to his house and shared his bed there. For that one, I'm not even going to blame him. I'm going to fully blame the parents because those people deserve to be slapped in the face. Look, I love whiskey there, eh? but if he popped up at my door and said, Hi, can I have a sleepover with your young son? How we say no! Like a normal person! And speaking of shitty parenting, all the parents of the kids Olu Samson allegedly abused were fully balling. One of them got a house, one of them got a diamond bracelet, one even got a whole house visa. Generous gifts from a wealthy man or sick bribes so they'll turn a blind eye. I can't say, but all I know for certain is those parents should be flogged. The next fact is that Olu Samson Adelaja had a ridiculous amount of security by his bedroom. Apparently, the corridor leading up to the room had CCTV and was wired, so if anyone was coming, there would be a noise to alert him. I mean, that doesn't mean too much. He was wealthy, he might have had money or diamonds in there. Oh, he might have always wanted to know when people were coming to his room for other reasons. Who knows? Another fun fact, Olu Samson was never seen with a woman. Like, doing stuff. His staff say a woman never slept in his bed. No Billie Jean, no Dirty Diana, nothing. Now, this obviously doesn't make him a pedophile, but all it suggests is he either really didn't like having sex with women in his own house and did that shit elsewhere, or he didn't do it at all, which again, doesn't mean anything. Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> Here's 
here's where facts start to get tricky. Olu Samson Adelaja had kitty porn. He had a suitcase next to his bed that had SNM photos and just tons of magazines with naked boys in it. Can we just take a break eh, to really reflect on that fact? This guy had a whole suitcase. Do you know how much porn you must have that you need a whole suitcase to carry it? Let's say it was not even a big suitcase. Let's say it was just one small carry-on. That's still so much porn. But anyway, having porn doesn't necessarily make you a pedophile, I guess. But having your fingerprints and the fingerprints of young children on the porn does look pretty bad, so yeah. And now for my final facts of the day. One of the kids knew what Olu Samson Adelaja's nether regions look like. That is, they knew what his skin looked like. So Olu Samson has a skin problem that made his body all discolored. Like, every single part of his body. When one of the kids he was accused of abusing back in 1993 was asked to draw what Olu Samson showed him, he drew some very discolored genitalia. And when the police checked Olu Samson's body and took pictures of what he looked like, it was a perfect match. There is no way this doesn't look bad. If your kid or nephew or niece came to hang out with me and then came home and said, oh hey, did you know Tamara's got a freckle on her left breast? Would you not come and brush me? That's all me I'm saying. So if you heard all this information about a random rich guy you didn't know anything about called Olu Samson Adelaja, would you say he's innocent? Would you say we need to know more? Would you say we should lock him in prison and throw away the key? Or would you be like me and mainly just be angry at the dipshit parents who essentially sold their kids for a house and some jewelry? And that's the end of the episode. Please do, don't boycott me like you did Oprah. I beg, I'm not rich. I don't have money to use and wipe my tears while people are abusing me. But sure, let us know what you think in the comments below. Let us know how it made you feel, because I know how it made me feel. Get it. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to Accelerate TV so you never miss an episode of me ranting about something or the other. And my name is Tamara and I'll be back with more from The Yellow Wall.